Yeah, so I think uh, one of the biggest misconceptions is that artificial intelligence is one thing uh, that we actually know what it is, um, because there are so many different definitions of AI uh, and no agreement. Uh, so people easily get get confused and debating uh, different things. Artificial intelligence is often talked about as if it is one thing and one technology, but in fact, it is many different things. And uh, it also feeds into misconceptions about how widely artificial intelligence is used uh, and where it is used. I think from a technology perspective, the most important question is to uh, to develop uh, methods for, for trustworthy development of AI systems. And because uh, right now we are at a stage where we can do a lot with the technology, but the development techniques has not evolved in the, in the same speed. Uh, so so there's a huge uh, demand for, for, for developing uh, truly ethical and trustworthy uh, development methods. The most important question is, uh, and, and this is actually a, a question that overlaps between ethics and law, is uh, how we can best regulate uh, the use of artificial intelligence in our society. Um, I don't think there is an, an easy answer uh, to that, um, but I think it is uh, very important that we find a right balance between uh, technological developments, which can actually improve our society not only by making it more efficient, but also to some extent making it more fair. Um, and then at the other hand, of course, to try to prevent a misuse of artificial intelligence. If I should look at uh, the, the opportunities first, I think that uh, AI powered legal technology can uh, be used to uh, create uh, more equality in front of the law in our societies. Um, it can be used to handle uh, large scale numbers of legal cases in a more similar manner and thereby uh, bringing about more justice in our society. Uh, I think the biggest challenge is that uh, these technologies can also um, introduce a new uh, and ethically negative or bad uh, results in terms of uh, various uh, biases or in terms of uh, not allowing sufficient flexibility in the law. And, and from the technology side, uh, I, will, I will support this and say we have actually Right now, we, we have a great opportunity in, in making more machine readable and machine executable uh, legislation yeah. and thereby create a more equal access to uh, what does the law say and, and what are our rights and obligations. Um, but of course, on the challenge side, uh, uh, if we have unequal access to this new technology, it can also create a technology race. Uh, so some people have a better uh, weapon uh, in, in, in legal uh, questions than, than others. Uh, so, so we have a, a challenge here in, in making uh, equal access. And then, of course, uh, if people start using immature uh, technologies, uh, then we have the problems of uh, uh, biased uh, algorithms or biased models um, that, that can be used uh, wrongly. Technology. I would say presently not very much. Uh, I think the technology in this field is still somewhat immature. And uh, I think uh, lawyers also um, really don't use uh, AI technology that much. At least not uh, for legal work. It is more for administrative tasks, I think, in, in these uh, bigger law firms. Um, and uh, how much should lawyers rely on AI technology? That depends very much on uh, what kind of lawyers and in what kind of contexts. Uh, if you talk about the lawyers who work in public administration where they have uh, perhaps um, to deal with many uh, cases that are repetitive and similar, I think there could be great advantages in uh, relying on AI, AI technology. Uh, but on the other hand, uh, if you have a very uh, 
wide portfolio of legal cases that you handle, like uh, in, a, in a law firm, for example, where you have many different kinds of topics and where there is also uh, bigger issues at stake, uh, such as human rights and so on, you should be more careful uh, about using this technology. Yeah, and I will also say, uh, supporting that we are right now at the huge potential um, uh, time in, in uh, of, of AI uh, and and uh, right now the understanding and the maturity of, of the technologies uh, is, is not ready for, for actually uh, using it in the big scale, but there are areas where you can uh, if you can easily check that the outcome of an algorithm uh, makes sense or not uh, for, for searching or, or otherwise uh, simple tasks, uh, then, then you can already start using it. But if it's in a complex problem area where you cannot decide whether this is a sensible outcome or not, uh, uh, where you really have to trust uh, the, the AI model, uh, then, then the technology is not ready uh, yet. I would say that uh, it's something we have also uh, uh, done a lot in, in our own uh, research uh, section at, at the, the Department of Computer Science at Copenhagen University is, is to have this uh, constructive and critical uh, view on, on AI technology uh, at the same place. Uh, so we can contribute to develop uh, standards, uh, methods for development AI, critical data studies, um, studies that combine uh, workplace studies with technological studies that are often not combined in an, in, in an industrial setting. Where so this are. is really the role of academia of being the, the independent cross-disciplinary uh, um, uh, peer-reviewed uh, open uh, development of, of methods. I think it's important that uh, academia and research institutions participate in public debate in regards to these issues and point to some of the shortcomings, but also some of the opportunities in using uh, artificial intelligence uh, to raise awareness generally in society and also to heighten the level of the debate. Um, especially important, I think, is this critical approach also because uh, to some extent, uh, there can be tech companies who have an interest in, uh, you know, painting uh, more nicer picture of what they can do uh, that, that that perhaps cannot always stand up to reality. I mean, we've we had in Denmark our, our portion of uh, tech scandals uh, in various places in the public sector. So I think it's important that uh, academia takes part in in this overarching debate and also, you know, uh, create a more realistic sense of what artificial intelligence can actually do in presence with present state of the art and what it cannot do. AI can be used to to get a better understanding of biases of uh, in in, in uh, real world uh, human settings are uh, all complex. Uh, situations, um, digital models of of workplaces, uh, hospitals, uh, society, uh, but of course it's already right now also changing how information flows to us and how we communicate uh, because we have AI models uh, that we don't really uh, comprehend that select uh, which messages we will see in our daily uh, information feed. Humans, and I also think that AI is uh, challenging us as humans, uh, it challenges also our, our self-perception. And as Thomas was saying, the way we receive information about the world and also the way we receive information about ourselves. So, so I think it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty big deal. So I'm very glad and thankful for, for, for you guys for, for raising awareness about this and, uh, and bringing this uh, out. Thank you.